Hey guys, this is Bruce Marshall from Simpler Trading with the nightly market update and video for Wednesday, March the 6th. And today, of course, we'll start with the S&P. Um, pretty messy day overall. We we went into the, this was yesterday, went into the close here. Overnight, went a little bit lower and continued that. And this is 27.75. Every time we got a bounce, it would just fail. And we took that level out and then bounced and came back down, took that level out, you know, and we just kept failing all day until we came down to this level. And then we started getting a foothold here. And I thought this was going to be the one that kind of turned us for the day and came down and that level failed. So, you know, when, whenever you have multiple, multiple, multiple levels failing, you know, in one direction, obviously it's not good, of course. But the question is, you know, where do we go from here? And uh, of course, you guys know I like to focus on the S&P. Um, we, I want to back this out and look at a longer term time frame because it gives us, you know, more perspective here. Let's put some, throw some voodoo lines on there, like that. Kind of clean this thing up a little bit and see what we have to work with. So we have been, matter of fact, let me do full screen here. We've been talking about this, you know, this pattern for quite a while as it has been, you know, the relentless move up off of 23, I still can't even believe that, 2346, and, you know, just up, 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 and, you know, I had been saying all along that this 2800 is probably going to be a level. There's a 2820 level and the 2830 level there is a big snow line. And let me highlight this 2820 level because that has turned out to be pretty, pretty tough level to get over. So if you notice, we hit that level once, twice. We almost hit it there, you know, over, 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 and we still can just cannot get through it. And that's 2820. And then again, we have a, a skyline there at 2830. So, you know, we've we've come up here and breached 2800, which I thought, you know, 2800 is, of course, a big round magnet with the big round number and um, thought we might have trouble getting through that. And we, and we kind of did. Basically, if you notice, when we hit this uh, fire line here, we chopped for a little while. Um, kind of chopped there at 2700 and now we're chopping again at 2800 versus just going straight through it and continuing straight through it continuing straight through it continuing you know back and forth back and forth back and forth and it's acting as support and resistance both sides at that one level so the question is here now see we've come back down into this we've got a skyline there at 2761 and we're at 2771 right now so that is going to be a level to deal with tomorrow if we go lower and then right under that guess what 200 day moving average guess what 2750 so I think and let me zoom in here and it's a little more apparent um, I think both of these are we will probably hit those tomorrow you know just we're just that close and those are our magnets now I don't know that we break through this 200 day that's a typically you know is a fair amount of resistance um, I don't you know there's no way to tell I saw a handful of tweets today and it didn't really do a lot for the market today like it normally does um, but remember we still got the Powell put out there is what started the whole thing anyway um, and we've still got the whole China trade negotiation um, scenario is still the carrot that is dangling out in front of the market's nose. And, you know, as soon as a deal is worked out, of course, we're going to keep going higher and so forth. Um, and the last point on that is that um, at some point, I do believe a lot of the, a lot of the uh, good news of the anticipation of China uh, agreement is is already being factored in the market right now um, so uh, again my best um, estimate or best guess is that we pull back and hopefully we pull back right here 
um, even into that skyline or that 200 day and then we start working our way back up and this will be our next level to contend with is probably that 2830 um, that's the that's probably my best case scenario because that that assumes that we hit this probably tomorrow uh, this is Wednesday so it'll be Thursday come down here touch that maybe touch that 200 day it holds um, we have payrolls on Friday so that should give us a boost to the upside because the economy is great and all that stuff um, and we start going back up here now we might run into this again as a we, you know we, we could touch down here come back up hit this fail again you know this could be multiple times before we finally get through but I think we ultimately will get through it um, especially when the China deal you know gets red hot again and so forth so all that being said I um I think you know the best way to play this obviously you're already in position right now if you know if you're listening to this you you've either um you're either in and you're riding this out or you're positioned to you know either short or long here I am slightly hedged on the downside not not heavily not like a black swan this thing's going to roll back over and all that kind of stuff cuz I don't see that happening um mainly because of again because of uh China and uh, the Fed. We got a Fed meeting next week and all that stuff. So you know we've got payrolls on Friday. So I just I don't see us just breaking down and just falling apart here. Um, it is possible, and I gave you the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is that we we break these levels, we break these levels, and we do end up going back down here. But but again with kind of the backstop of the Fed and and China and so forth, I don't. That's a less likely scenario at this point. Um, so. That being said, I would, and you have to be careful doing this and, and be careful, with, you know, don't hear part of what I'm saying, but I, I'm going to be a buyer on, on pullbacks here. Um, maybe giving myself a little bit more time, maybe a couple of two, three weeks, you know, but there will, there will probably be some short cover on the way back up and it could, you know, we could continue this thing up because overall this, the trend is still higher until it's broken, you know, this trend is is bullish and you know, we can't as much as I don't like the way it looks it uh, that's it's still bullish even with the pullback it's still bullish so be careful for the turn to the back you know to continuation on the upside we'll know in the next couple of days if this thing's gonna break we'll pr we may even know tomorrow um, and you know and it's possible that we get you know one of these kind of days um, again, I'm not expecting that, but you know, anything's possible in this market because it's, you know, the whole market is hyped up on, you know, hopium anyway. Um, but you just be careful of news driven, you know, events and things like that. But again, until, um, until the trend overall changes, I'm still looking for higher. Um, so I'm to try to be a, a dip buyer. A reluctant dip buyer and in small size uh, as we go until I'm proven wrong because that's what's been working for you know the last 400 points and I don't think anything has really changed with the backdrop of the market so that being said um, again be careful and uh, we should know in the next couple of days so hopefully at the next update next week we will you know I'll be able to we'll be able to talk about how either we're much higher or much lower or you know something in between so with that let me wind it up uh hope you guys have great trading be careful remember payrolls on friday that could be a catalyst um so with that have a great rest of the day and i'll talk to you at the next update thanks